for the deliverance of his people. Our objective in this study is twofold. First of all, we shall be unraveling God's plan for the deliverance of his people as it is in scripture. And then, we shall be understanding the provision made for the deliverance of God's people. Does God has a, have any plan? Is it in scripture? Is there anywhere in scripture where it is clear that God wants his people to be free? Yes. We look at the book of Psalm 103 and in verse 1 all the way to verse 5. He said, bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me, bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all his benefits. Who forgiveth all thine iniquities? Who healeth all thy diseases? Who redeemeth or delivereth thy life from destruction? Who crowneth thee with loving kindness and tender mercies? Who satisfieth thy mouth with good things? So that thy youth is renewed like the eagles. So we are seeing the God who forgives sins, iniquities, who heals diseases, and delivers his people. That is the God we are seeing. Now Psalm 107 and in verse 20, the Bible said, He sent his word and healed them and delivered them from their destructions. He sent his word and healed them and delivered them from their destructions. God is interested in the healing of his people and God is interested in the deliverance of his people. This is very important because we live in the world today where deliverance is such a big subject. Big subject because we have people under different kinds of bondage, different kinds of captivity, different kinds of affliction. But I prophesy to you today, in the name that is above every name, every form of bondage, every form of captivity in your life shall be broken tonight in the name of Jesus Christ. You believe that, shout the Lord and say amen. Amen. Numbers chapter 23 and in verse 23. Numbers chapter 23 and in verse 23 said, Surely there is no enchantment, no bewitchment against Jacob. Neither is there any divination against Israel. According to this time it shall be said of Jacob and of Israel, What has God wrought? No enchantment, no bewitchment, no divination, no satanic orchestration no occultic manipulation is permitted to survive against israel and against the people of god i decree today in the name of jesus every trace of bewitchment every trace of enchantment every trace of divination demonic diabolic orchestration against your life and your destiny i declare it broken shattered in the name of jesus christ psalm 124 verse 1 all the way to verse end psalm 124 verse 1 all the way to verse end he said if it had not been the lord who was on our side now may israel say if it had not been the lord who was on our side when men rose up against us then they would have swallowed us up quick when their wrath was kindled against us then the waters would have overwhelmed us the stream would have gone over our soul then the proud waters would have gone over our soul he said blessed be the lord who has not given us as a prey to their teeth our soul is escaped as a bird out of the snare of the fowlers the snare is broken and we are escaped our help is in the name of the Lord who made the heavens and the earth. When you are talking about snare, snares, when you are talking about traps, when you are talking about nets, when you are talking about pits and pitfalls, all are in the category of satanic captivity, satanic bondage. But our destiny is to escape the snare. Our destiny is to escape the net. Our destiny is to escape the traps of hell. I announce here in the name of Jesus, every trap the devil has set for you, every snare the devil has laid for you, and every satanic pit they have dug for you, today they are destroyed, they are ruined, they are cancelled, they are nullified in the name of Jesus so shall it be in the name of jesus christ and, and you look at jeremiah chapter 31 and in verse 29 he said in those days they shall say no more the fathers have eaten 
a sour grape and the children's feet are set on edge. But everyone shall die for his own iniquity. Every man that eateth the sour grape, his teeth shall be set on edge. This is a key deliverance scripture and a key promise. Because we know that one of the channels of bondage and captivity is the channel of, of inheritance. Hereditary channel. The channel of ancestral or generational curses. But here the, the Lord is giving the promise to his people that the time is coming and that time is now. Where it will not be said that the father drank sour orange and the child's teeth is reacting. But everyone shall die for his iniquity. The meaning of that we have said several times means I am owing the devil nothing. The liar, I cannot pay the debt of my fathers. My father, my forefathers cannot be involved in iniquity. Cannot be involved in satanic transaction and the devil hold me responsible for it. I wasn't there when my four forefathers engaged the devil. I wasn't there when they went to the altars. I wasn't there when they made the promises. I was not there when they transacted and offered blood sacrifices. I wasn't there. So I cannot be held liable for what I am not aware of. I owe the devil nothing. That is what God and God provides for us in the scripture. I announce to you today in the name that is above every name, every agenda of the enemy that is coming upon you from your father's house today, it is broken in the name of Jesus. Every liability of your father's house, every curse, every divination, every enchantment that has come from any any quarter your mother's line your father's line and every other line around you i declare they are broken in the name of jesus christ somebody say aloud amen somebody say aloud amen somebody say after me i owe the devil nothing say it louder i owe the devil nothing say it again say i owe the devil nothing in the name of Jesus, say, in the name of Jesus, I refuse to pay the liabilities of my fathers. I refuse to pay for the transactions of my forefathers. So shall it be in the name of Jesus Christ. You believe that? Give the Lord a shout of praise and be seated in the presence of the Lord. In the book of Galatians chapter 3 and in verse 13 Galatians chapter 3 and in verse 13 it said Christ has redeemed us from the curse of the law. Be made a curse for us for it is written cursed is everyone that hangeth on a tree that the blessing of Abraham might come on the Gentiles through Jesus Christ. And that we might receive the promise of the spirit through faith. Christ redeemed us from the curse of the law. From anything that is called a curse. A generational curse. A family curse. An ancestral curse. An occultic curse. A witchcraft curse. We are redeemed. We used to sing a song. I am delivered. Praise the Lord. I am delivered. By his word. Once I was bound by the chains of Satan. I am delivered. Praise the Lord. I am delivered. Praise the Lord. I am delivered by his word. Once I was bound by the chains of Satan. But now I am delivered. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. We are delivered in the name of Jesus. We are delivered. That is Christ redeemed us from the curse of the law. In John chapter 8 verse 32. In John chapter 8 verse 32. He said and ye shall know the truth. And the truth shall make you free. You shall know the truth. And the truth shall make you free. Who is the truth? Jesus Christ is the truth. In John chapter 4. In John chapter. In John chapter chapter 14 verse 6 he said i am the way and the truth and the life i am the way and the truth and the life jesus is the truth the knowledge of jesus is the knowledge of freedom you shall know the truth and the truth shall make you free if you have known the truth you are not permitted to be bound jesus christ is the reason for our freedom i announce to someone here today in the name of jesus your freedom is guaranteed in Jesus' precious name. Amen. Someone say a louder amen. 
Someone said the Lord must say amen. In 2 Corinthians chapter 3 and in verse 17, 2 Corinthians chapter 3 verse 17, it said, Now the Lord is the spirit. And where the spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. Where the spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. Once we are connected to the spirit of God, we are connected to liberty. Somebody say a loud amen. Somebody say a louder amen. Hallelujah. Now, what is the platform for our deliverance? What is God's provision? What, why do we expect to be delivered? Why do we expect to walk in liberty? Number one, what guarantees our deliverance and liberty? Number one, being created in the image of God is our number one guarantee for deliverance being created in the image of God Genesis chapter 1 and in verse 26 the Bible said and God said let us make man in our image after our likeness and let them have dominion verse 27 so God made man God created man in his own image in the image of God created him male and female created in them by being created in the image of God, we have the guarantee of walking in liberty. Why is that so? Because God can't be bound. God can't be possessed. God cannot be oppressed. God cannot be bound. God cannot be possessed. God cannot be oppressed. The image of God cannot be bound. The image of God cannot be possessed. The image of God is not permitted to be oppressed. In our place, they said, an elephant does not suffer convulsion. It's not permitted. Elephant's child is not permitted to suffer convulsion. Why? It looks to me like the body is too big for convulsion. It's, it's the same way like a lion's child is not permitted to die of hunger because the father, the parents are the, fa are the source of food in the same manner. Our father, our maker who created us cannot be bound, cannot be oppressed, cannot be possessed, cannot be tormented. On that basis, we are not permitted to be oppressed. We are not permitted to be possessed. We are not permitted to be tormented. I announce today every trace of torment, every trace of possession, every trace of oppression, I declare it is over in the name of Jesus Christ being created in the image of God is our guarantee of deliverance number two being blessed at creation is our number two guarantee being blessed at creation genesis 1 28 and god blessed them that is enough god blessed them god did not create us and curse us god blessed them that is enough what is the meaning of that before any generational curse came the blessing was on ground before any ancestral curse came, the blessing was on ground. Before any transaction my forefathers made, before any transaction our foremothers made that may have implicated our lives, before they made that transaction, the blessing was on ground. It was as if light was on ground before darkness appeared. That means light came too late. It was as if bleach was on the ground before the stain arrived. Which means the stain came too late. Is God speaking to somebody here? Your, your blessing predated your curse. The blessing on your life predated the curse. The curse came to meet the blessing. It was as if healing was on ground and the sickness arrived too late. It was as if medicine was in the body before the, 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 the bacteria arrived. Antibacteria was on ground and the bacteria arrived. And the bacteria arrived only to die there. Are you hearing what I'm saying here today? You were blessed before the curse arrived. Somebody say after me, say the curse came too late. The curse came too late. Say I was blessed before the, before the curse. I have been blessed beyond the curse. 
I am blessed beyond a curse. Shout the loudest, amen. I am blessed beyond the curse. I decree you are blessed beyond the curse. Every ancestral curse, every generational curse, every family curse, every transaction of your father's house became too late because the blessing existed before the curse. If this is the only one you take from here, you can run with it. The blessing by being blessed at creation because the blessing came before the curse. Number three is by the do what guarantees our deliverance by the dominion mandate at creation. By the dominion mandate at creation. When God created man, he created man with a mandate of dominion. The dominion mandate at creation. And God blessed them. Genesis 1, 28. And God said, Be fruitful, multiply, replenish the earth, and subdue it, and have dominion. Have dominion. We can stop there. Have dominion. Have dominion. Man was not created to be dominated. Man was created to dominate. To dominate, to dominate the creation. To dominate the forces of darkness. To dominate the forces of hell. Man was not created to be a captive. We were created to be the captain. We are not created to be under control. We are created to be in charge. God said subdue. We are not created to be undergoers. We are created to be overcomers. We are not created to answer to anybody but God. Are you hearing what I'm saying here today? There is a dominion mandate on your life from creation. And that dominion mandate is taking you up right now. In the name that is above every name. Everything that has put your life under. That has put your destiny under. That has put you in subjection and subjugation by the forces of hell. I declare it is broken right now. In the name of Jesus. By being created with the dominion mandate. Somebody say after me. I was created to dominate. I was not created to be dominated. I was created to be in control. I was never created to be under the control of any devil. I was created to take charge. I was not created to be under. I was created an overcomer, not created to be an undergoer. The Bible says, declare thou that thou mayest be justified. If you are saying these things and you mean them from your heart, I see your liberty already, already released. You believe that shout the loudest, amen. By the dominion mandate at creation. What is the guarantee of our deliverance? Number four, by the walk of the cross of Calvary. By the walk of the cross of Calvary. By the walk of the cross of Calvary. Galatians chapter 3 and in verse 13 and in verse 14. Galatians 3, 13 and 14 say, Christ has redeemed us from the curse of the law. Be made a curse for us. For it is written, cursed is everyone that hangs on a tree. That the blessing of Abraham might come on the Gentiles through Jesus Christ that we might receive the promise of the Spirit through faith. Christ redeemed us from the curse of the law. That is, everything that was a curse that we should have carried, Christ carried them. He rescued us. He exchanged. He took our place. The cross for us was a crossover where there was an exchange. The curses that should have come on, come on us went on him. Uh, the, 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 the afflictions that should have come on us went on him so that we can take his blessing and take his liberty and take his freedom. The cross is a crossover from the realm of curses to the realm of blessings, from the realm of affliction to the realm of liberation, from the realm of bondage to the realm of, of dominion. 
the cross is our cross of by the walk of the cross of calvary i prophesy upon somebody here today in the name that is above every name jesus christ the resurrected lord by the walk of the cross of calvary i declare that's right i declare i declare i declare your liberty right now i want you to know that calvary is an altar calvary is an altar because an altar is the place of sacrifice jesus was sacrificed at the cross of calvary and the blood was shed and transactions were made for good for mankind so whenever there is an altar fighting against your life there is another altar that came to free you it is called calvary so it is altar versus altar blood against blood altar against altar sacrifice against sacrifice hey he and when two altars meet the yeah yeah altar must bow when two sacrifice meet the useless sacrifice must give way when two blood meet the useless blood must give way can i ask you a question is it possible for the blood of a goat or the blood of a ram or the blood of a cow or the blood of a tortoise to prevent the work of the blood of Jesus Christ from gaining effect in your life can the blood of a donkey blood of a tortoise a blood of a cow a blood of a cat tie something that the blood of God the blood of Jesus cannot untie cannot lose can the sacrifice the killing of a cow the killing of a ram can it produce a negative result that the sacrifice of the son of god cannot nullify cannot cancel answer is no answer is no answer is no is there any altar in your father's house any altar in your village any altar in your community that is stronger than altar of calvary no way on the basis of this i announce your freedom is released here tonight your deliverance is released here tonight your liberty is released here tonight stand on your feet and shout the loudest amen the louder amen the loudest amen help me shake somebody's hand around you tell them there is an altar stronger than the altar fighting against you there is an altar stronger than the altar fighting against you there is a blood superior than the blood trying to work against you there is a sacrifice superior than this as to the sacrifice that is working against you give the lord a shout of praise and take your seat in the presence of the lord by the walk of the cross of calvary our deliverance is guaranteed more than guaranteed by the walk of the cross of calvary and then number number five i already mentioned that and that is by the blood of the covenant the blood of the covenant the blood of jesus is the blood of the covenant zechariah chapter 9 verse 11 zechariah chapter 9 verse 11 he said as for you also by the blood of your covenant i have sent forth thy prisoners out of the pit wherein there is no water by the blood of your covenant i release prisoners from the pit that had no water somebody say aloud amen somebody say a louder amen the blood of jesus is the release of the captives is the release of prisoners is the release is the receipt is the judgment is the verdict that releases you from the prison of addiction from the prison of pornography of masturbation from the prison of poverty and scarcity and shortage from the prison of every demonic spirit husband spirit wife spirit children from the prison of serpentine spirits occultic powers from the prison where the devil has kept you i announce today by this blood of the sacrifice your release is confirmed in the name of jesus as i minister right now i see prison doors open everywhere everywhere people right here people watching online watching all around the world the prisons are opening right now and you are coming out of the grave out of the pit out of the cage where the enemy kept you you are coming out now in the name of jesus Zerota parata sakota kalata parata shakodoga Jacoco parata se frete casita kalagadiala le parata satorata shikalagadida Jacola bayada yes by the blood of the covenant our deliverance is guaranteed number six by the power of resurrection by the power of resurrection in the book of 
Ephesians chapter 2 verse 5 and in verse 6 Ephesians chapter 2 even when we were dead in sins he has quickened us together with Christ by grace are ye saved and he raised us up together and made us sit together in heavenly places in Christ Jesus where is this heavenly places heavenly places Ephesians chapter 1 verse 20 21 22 which he wrote in Christ when he read, raised him from the dead and set him at his own right hand in the heavenly places that is far above principalities, above power, above witches, above wizards, above demons, above devils, above above water spirits, above spirit husband, spirit wife, serpentine spirit, above occultic powers, above witchcraft powers, and might and dominion, and every name that is named, not only in this world, but also in that which is to come. And has put all things, all things, all witches, all wizards, all demons, all forces under his feet and gave him to be the head over all things to the church. Hallelujah. 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 That is, you are sitting in a realm that is beyond the reach of witches. In a realm that is beyond the reach of demons. Uh, Jesus resurrected and went and sat at the right hand of God the Father. And the Bible says he raised us. Us means everyone that is a child of God. That is born of God. He raised us up. And made us to sit with him there. Like I always say. It is like you are in a 60 story building. The 60th floor of a 60 story building. And what is looking for you. The snake looking for you is on the ground floor. It will be a waste of fear. To fear a snake on the ground floor. Whereas you are seated on the 60th floor of a story building. That is what God did for us by the resurrection so if it is only the resurrection of Jesus you are aware of on the basis of that resurrection your deliverance is guaranteed on the basis of that you are sitting where the devil cannot reach you are sitting where witches cannot reach you are sitting where wizards cannot reach you are sitting where the occult people cannot reach now why is this so the Bible says he confirms the word of his servant he performs the counsel of his messenger what we do not speak God cannot confirm so I am speaking it now that you are seated where the devil can near you from this moment forward all those forces that used to locate you their power is broken in the name of Jesus their power is broken in the name of Jesus very soon you'll be right up there even tonight many are going to have encounters where you are, what I'm saying now becomes becomes real and flesh in the realm of the spirit where you are sitting far up and the demons looking for you they are just down there you are looking at them but they can't reach where you are because that is where you are in the realm of the spirit by the power of the resurrection your deliverance is guaranteed you are you are existing in the realm that is beyond the reach of witches existing in the realm that is beyond the reach of demons existing in the realm that is beyond the reach of the powers of your father's house existing in that realm somebody say a loud amen give the lord a big clap of hand take your seat and finally number seven by the walking of the spirit of god by the walking of the spirit of god liberty is guaranteed you look at that in second corinthians chapter 3 and in verse 17. second corinthians chapter 3 and in verse 17. now the lord is that spirit and where the spirit of the lord is there is liberty where the spirit of the lord is there is liberty where the spirit of the lord is if the spirit of the lord is in you there is liberty in you if the spirit of the lord is in a church there is liberty in that church that is the easiest way to know where deliverance takes place a lot is where you can feel the spirit of god where you can sense the spirit of god the climate of the spirit is the climate of deliverance is the climate of liberty the spirit of the lord is the spirit of liberty 
liberty. If you are possessed of the spirit of God, you are not permitted to be possessed of a devil. In the name of Jesus Christ, I decree today by the working of the spirit of God in your life, every chain of bondage is broken. Every yoke of bondage is broken. Every agenda of witchcraft is broken. Every agenda of the occult is broken. Every agenda of demons are broken. Name of Jesus. You believe that they are broken, you rise up on your feet and tell them they are broken. And tell them they are broken. Lift your hands. I declare every agenda of witchcraft is broken. Every power of hell is broken. Every chain of darkness is broken. Everything my father in heaven has not done or rough in your life is broken and dissolved right now. In the name of Jesus. What have we said so far is the guarantee of our liberty being created in the image of God and then being blessed at creation and then by the dominion mandate at creation and then by the work of the cross of Calvary and then by the blood of the covenant and then by the power of resurrection and then by the working of the spirit of God, by the working of of the spirit of God by the working of the spirit of God liberty is guaranteed by the working of the spirit of God by the working of the spirit of God by the working of the spirit of God what is your responsibility you shall know the truth John chapter 8 verse 32 this will be the one and only key we'll use today. In subsequent times, we shall talk more. You shall know the truth and the truth shall make you free. You shall know the truth and the truth shall make you free. You shall know the truth and the truth shall make you free. And if the Son of Man shall make you free, you are free indeed. The Bible said, I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the message of the living God, Romans chapter 12, verse 1, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable to God, which is your reasonable service, and be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind, that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. You renew your mind and set yourself free what you just heard now listen to it over and over and over meditate upon this let it shape your thought because as he thinketh in his heart so is he let it shape your thought let it shape your 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 your, 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 your mindset let it shape your imagination and without any further struggle your deliverance is guaranteed. Lift up your hands everywhere you are and begin to appreciate him. Honor him for the word you heard tonight. Worship him, honor him, adore him. Jesus, we pray. We are going to